this will be my first video of showing how to actually play the game I wrote, the CWE, which is the Civil War Engine dot com if you want to actually download it and take a look at it. Uh, here I've just opened the game up and I want to start a new battle so I'll go over here and click on the new and it'll ask me if I want to do a play by email game. The difference between selecting play by email and saying no is that the game will, will have passwords on it if it's a play by email game while the other style allows you to save games and run them at any time and it's basically a uh, hot seat mode where it assumes both players are there and just can switch back and forth or you're playing against yourself but I'll say yes and it'll ask me for the name of the game and this will be demo one I'll say OK on it. Gives me two choices. Antietam is the more developed one. The Gettysburg one just has a little demo scenario for the area around Devil's Den. But Antietam, while it's marked as a battle of, it's really Hooker's initial attack that I have set up already. So it'll come up, show the corner of the screen. I'm going to demonstrate it from the Union side. So I click the Union flag and it says, enter a password. Later it will prompt you for this password to see. I'm going to say USA because I don't want to forget it. And OK. It'll ask me if I want to enter commands. I'll say yes. And basically, I now have a game running. Go over here to the North Woods. And you'll find I have most of my troops out here. First Corps headquarters. That'll be our good old fellow hooker. Old Fighting Joe is supposed to get the attack going, but. Uh, these are the initial positions around 5 a.m. in the morning. So you have most of Meade's division down in this area. His uh, third brigade occupying the North Wood with a detachment over here in the East Wood of Meade's first brigade. Seymour's Brigade. So they're about the only ones that can do much of anything. They have some attack orders, but uh, pretty small force to force a battle on. And we're quite a ways away with support troops. We've got Double Day, mostly with his brigade scattered out of here along the Hagerstown Pike with the artillery for the, that division and for Meade's division well behind the lines. Over here is the wagon parks for the various artillery and infantry supply wagons. Over to the right of them is Ricketts division is second division of the Hooker's Corps are more or less sit around this road but they're still quite a ways back from uh, Bede's forward position in the East Wood so it's a take about an hour to get all these troops moving And you almost can see no Confederates since they don't have any forward units at all. Nicodemus Hill looks like it's unoccupied, but because we are all-knowing generals, we know it isn't unoccupied. And if we get back over 
here there are some other troops available but uh, because this is hooker's attack and doesn't extend far enough into the uh, battle to include the 12th Corps which is well over to the rear and the right I don't remember what they call this area but it's concentrated there ready to support but it's a long way from the battlefield and for my little demonstration I'm gonna do it's only hookers attack so all these troops are fixed and aren't going to be available to bring up to support the attack. That'll probably be the next scenario I develop for it is to bring the 12th Corps in. Jump map here lets you move around, find where your troops. We can see one Confederate, a little Ford regiment that's uh, covering the east wood so probably one of the first things we want to do is to advance Seymour down to where he can determine who's really down there but well, we probably don't want to get into a fight I'm not going to get into orders on this game but uh, I did want to just show a couple of things about it. Something like the second Pennsylvania reserve back here is 189 men. The scale of this game is 50 yards to a hex. So it takes about 150 men to cover that frontage in a two rank line. So having 189 men there means He's in about two and a half lines. A little denser than you, sh you want, but that does give you a lot of filler to keep that frontage good. But the game allows you to change that. You can give law orders, and tell them to spread out, get more firepower out of the regiment that way if he does it. Has its disadvantages too. Actually, he can extend all the way up to five hexes, but for 200 men, that's basically a skirmish line, not a firing line. And let's take a look at a couple of other things real quick. One of them is Hooker himself. He's over here. We have the third division Meads not with his four troops. But he does have a problem. He's in still in defensive mode here, his stance, so he isn't going to be able to execute a good attack. He can march to the put them into line, but he isn't going to be able to really engage as long as he's in defensive mode. And I'll get into that into another video, but uh, basically Hooker, who is in assault mode since he earlier received orders from uh, the commander to do that, can issue orders. And these are the various orders he can do and how much they cost and the number of points for it. This will be a video by itself how he's going to go about trying to get all these divisions to go from defensive into assault mode. But for there I'll cancel that. And uh, that'll end this. I just wanted to do a short one just how to get the game going. I can save my position on this, leave the game, and now if we take a look uh, we have a demo over here. There will also be a second file 
created at the same time. Once I complete my orders and close out my orders, you'll normally have a bin and an RPY file, which is a replay file. Those are the two files you'd email to your opponent so he could do his part of the turn. And that concludes what I wanted to show you today. Goodbye.